I got under the dining room table, I was working at it at the time, and boom, it shook. So I just looked around and thought, get under here quickly. So I did, because it was, it's about that thick. <laughs> and I thought it can't fall on me. And that was a good idea. And um, we spend a lot of time outside just to minimise. Obviously, when you're inside, you can hear everything rattling, and, and the kids are more aware of aftershocks. So we spend a lot of time just hanging outside, and just you know, you didn't really feel it so much, and then just enjoying some sort of normality. I think uh, holding it together, keeping calm. Um, you know, they uh, you just got to ride them out. You can't do anything about them, so you just have to find yourself a nice safe spot and just ride it out and and keep it together. Don't panic. Uh, That'd be my, my tip. Stay calm and don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah, no. there's no need to panic. No. Yeah. We tried to keep everything as mellow as possible for the kids so we never ever showed our own fear in front of our children. Because of that, um, she wasn't around, but the, the four and a half year old, he's never showed any signs of stress or when it happens, fear or every time good. there's an aftershock, he just thinks it's hilarious and dances around. So we've just never, we've always just tried to keep it really relaxed in our family and even if things were falling around, like in front of us, we just, just we still never, still exciting, still never good. screamed, never cried in front of the kids, yeah. just kept happy in front of them and then they in turn stayed really calm or he stayed really calm the whole time. When it all kicked off the kids were at school so I think it was the first thought was to go and check out how they are and got up there and there were a load of kids. Some of them were really panicked and some of them weren't and I later found out you know that was down to which teachers were panicked and which ones weren't and so kind of after the quakes what you really get is a, um, an idea of, uh, of how easy they took it really you know. And you see kids who haven't and they've been a bit traumatised and so are the parents. And I think that's the way it's fed back for the kids, you know. If you were kind of chilled about it or you got together quickly and, you know, just got on with it, they were the same. Keep the kids calm, you know, be as calm yourself as you possibly can. Don't let them show you getting freaked out, you know. We just pretended like they were funny to a certain degree, you know, and, um, and we didn't talk about anything that, you know, that had concerned us in front of them and just tried to make it just seem like it was just one of those things that happened quite regularly and that people just cope with it. Keeping your head, I would say. So not watching the news or looking at newspapers where they keep replaying all of the old trauma and tragedy because they do that for cells. Um, just... Just keeping calm, because if you don't, then you're running around like a chicken without a head, and that's not helpful to anyone, it's not helpful to yourself, and it's extra stress that you don't need at that point. Yeah, we, we never really no. watched anything, or no. if we spoke about it, we'd speak about it after he went to bed, and yeah, I definitely tried to keep him away, because we didn't want him to ever know that we were very nervous about it, which obviously we were. Well, we had a lot of trouble getting hold of uh, family and friends, so... We uh, spent, well, when we did manage to get hold of someone, they were outside of Christchurch, and so we used them as a, a calling point to say, okay, we're okay, and can you call these people to let them know that we're also okay? When the dog got lost, and, and she just ran, we opened the front door and she just up and ran, and we never found her. And luckily she had a tag, and a, a truck driver found her in Billy Ave, and uh, he we could saw the name and the address on it and brought it back, but the animals are scared, and, you, and so you've got to keep them close to you, you can't let them go. Yeah, animals didn't survive in the earthquake very well at all. For us, it was just getting back out there and helping everyone, and um, there was a team of us, a few of us guys all bounded together and went around and just, that took our mind off it, well, really, yeah. So, a few, few, about three, four trucks just digging out all that um, liquefaction and just helping everyone, so yeah. Um, after the earthquake, the first thing we do is we gather around and have prayers, you know, um, give us some strength within, and then um, we just put our hands to those that need help, yeah, and, and the people around us mainly, yeah, that, that, that helps us get through all the, you know, the big, big one and, and the aftershocks, yeah. One of the things I found really useful after the earthquake was having a bit of cash. $50, maybe $80, it's Hello. easily easily transferable and people want it, you can get what you want, it really puts your mind at ease. To be honest, the army was bloody useful and shops giving away their food was really useful. Um, hugs, cuddling was quite good. 
probably actually stock up on the essentials instead of just thinking about I'll get around to that one day because you might actually need them. One piece of advice is always keep at least half a tank of fuel in your van and have another 20 litre can of diesel stashed under the house because you're probably going to need it. <laughs> um, well luckily I had a fireplace which was still working so I had fire for the, um, the heating and a bit of cooking and also I was into a bit of tramping so I had a gas stove which runs on petrol so I just had a, a fuel you know siphon off the, the lawnmower so using that for heating in like um, the little uh, solar chargers you can buy from J cars or any like you know places they're great for charging up your cell phone in an emergency so yeah that was pretty good water we all need it and um, when you don't have it you you kind of you're stuck so you know uh, really everyone's got a bath everyone's got a big big receptacle and fill it full of water um, and then you're, you're sorted if I could offer any advice uh, that would really help is to have a, a reasonably well stocked pantry or larder basically have a good supply of food and a portable gas supply a good barbecue um, gas cooker for boiling water and uh, preparing food the tip I have is make sure you know how to open your automatic garage door because it's run by electricity if you've got no power you don't know how to open it not only females I know males who didn't know how to open it <laughs>